Hi, welcome to the port mapped I.O. video for the Intel AD85 and Zilog Z80. In an earlier video, we have already seen how to address components like RAM, ROM and peripherals over the 16-bit address bus. When you address a peripheral over the standard memory instructions, that is called memory mapped I.O. There is also a port mapped I.O. Let's have a closer look at the CPUs, beginning with the 8085 on the left. With the pin 34 IOM, you can switch between memory or I.O. ports. On the Z80, it is pin 20, input-output request. These I.O. ports are called port mapped I.O. ports. They are also connected to the address and data bus, but not enabled or selected, and therefore not accessible over the standard memory instructions. With uh, specific in and out instructions, every component on the bus gets unselected except for the CPU. The port mapped IOs are now selected, but will be accessible only over 8 bits, which means you are limited to 256 different addresses. So, in other words, an in or out instruction will put a valid IO address on the lower half of the address bus. Data is exchanged over the data bus. The difference between the Intel and the Zilog is that the Intel will put the same 8-bit address also in the upper 8 bits of the address bus, and the Zilog will put the value of the accumulator on the upper half of the address bus. Depending on which in-out instructions you are using on the Z80, the register B and C is put on the address bus. But on most ports, only the lowest 8 bits are considered for the port mapping. But there are exceptions like the Amstrad CPC, PCW and the Sinclair ZX81. They also use the upper half of the address bus. If the execution of these in or out instructions has ended, everything returns to normal. ROM, RAM and memory mapped peripherals are accessible again, but no more for the port mapped peripherals. Enough theory, let's jump immediately to the simulator. If you're not interested in the Intel 8085, you may skip immediately to the Z80 part at 933. In this simulator, you can find your I.O. ports on the tools. Here you have your 256 addresses. And under tools, peripheral devices, you find one, two, three, four, five peripherals. And you can define them as in or output. If they are defined as out, they will act like LEDs, and if they are defined as inputs, you can use them as switches. And the address you can define here. So here you have, you can enter a valid number from 0 to FF. Okay, let's do our first example. To read a value, that's an instruction in, and specify the address, I will use the this I.O., that's 25. To output it, that's a command out, and I will use here this one, I set address 00. zero. And doing an endless loop.
So you can see here the in is a two byte command and the out is also a two byte command. Simulation start. So we read the value. They are all um, they are all off. So the accumulator is zero, and we will put the accumulator through the out address. Well, in this case, it's uh, zero, and jump. Yeah, the program is running a bit slow. Let's help it a little bit. Oh, that's better. Uh, we can do a little variation here using this output port, FE. So here I will complement the accumulator. Complement means invert the bits. 0 will get 1 and 1 will get 0. Out it to FE. And putting the peripherals back here. Running the simulator. Um, I want to stop the program if all the switches are 1. So here I have complemented the accumulator. So I have to compare it to zero. And here jump on non zero. The program is stopped now because all switches are Activated and the accumulator is zero because we have complemented it in the source code. Uh, we can also use the terminal here at port 20. Um, we want to output a text, label text, and the classic Hello World program. Text and label, and here loading HL with text, loading register B with the lens of the text, and here we're doing our print loop, loading the first character. Outputting it to 20, incrementing HL, decrementing register B, and jump on non zero until uh, B is zero. So stopping the program here, and Hello World appeared here. Stay tuned for the ZAD, or see you in the next video. Bye bye. In this simulator, we have under Tools, I.O. ports, our 256 ports, from 0 to FF, and under Tools, Peripheral Devices, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, five peripherals we can define as in or output and specify their port address 
So here you can specify the port number. If the device is configured as output, you have eight LEDs. And if the device is configured as input, um, you have eight uh, input switches. Or you can define the value here. And you can just type uh, the number or even launch the virtual keyboard. OK. The first command is in for input. And you specify the input uh, port address here, 25. And output it to the address 00. zero. And I want to do an endless loop. So the input A is a 2-byte command and output the port address is also a 2-byte command and they are compatible with the Intel 8080 or 8085. So the first command is input. None of the switches are selected so the result will be 0 and outputting it to 0, 0, all the LEDs will be turned off. Give a little bit more speed here. It's working fine. By the way, I want also to use the output port 31. We'll just complement the accumulator. Complement means uh, every 0 will turn to 1 and every 1 will turn to a 0. Outputting it to 31. You can only use uh, the accumulator with uh, in and out operations. Okay. Next, I want to implement a stop routine when all the switches are turned on. So Turned on, it's normally FF, but we have complemented the accumulator here, so we have to compare it to zero. Compare it to zero, and here jump on non zero, or relative jump on non zero. Quick check. Program is running, but I will turn on all the switches now and the program has stopped. The next thing I want to do is write here a message. That's port number 20. So we'll do the classic here. A text label and the famous hello world. Text and label. So, after the loop has finished, loading HL with the address of the text label, specifying the length of the text as the end minus the text, and doing a small loop here, loading the first character from the memory address, Outputting it to a terminal or to, to the terminal which is port 20. 
then we have to increment the memory address and I'm using the decrement jump on num0 which will decrement b until it has uh, reached 0 so program is running fine and now he has printed hello world so what is if you want to specify in your program dynamically the output port in the input port well in the z80 you can specify the in or output port in register c but only in uh, register C. You can't use uh, another register. And here you replace the address with C. Works the same way. So the difference between a uh, standard in and out is you can specify in register C and only in C the destination port or the source port. And you can use any register here. So it shouldn't be restricted to A, but you can also use B, C, even overwrite your own destination port. And the same goes for the in command, A, B, C, D, E, H, L, from the source port specified in C. And here you can also overwrite uh, the source port after in C, comma. See. Another difference is um, the address on the address bus. With the normal command, we will put the port address on the lower 8 bits of uh, the address bus and the accumulator in the upper 8 bits. But normally, the peripheral considers only uh, the lower 8 bits. But with the out C or in C command, it puts the value of C on the lower 8 bits of the address bus and the value of B, the decrementer, on the upper 8 bits of uh, the address bus. Is there a way to simplify the output? Yes, there is one solution here. Just use the command out i output increment. I will go here yes, to step by step. Stopping through the program here. Okay, just before the out uh, increment, B is loaded with the length of the text to display. C is the destination address. So with out E, I will put the first character on the terminal. And um, I will jump back to the beginning of the loop because the zero flag is still zero. Take command jump on non zero, we will take command B. And we will put the rest of the text. Well no we won't because um yeah. I don't need a decrement jump on non zero because the out increment will automatically decrement B. 
So let me replace this with jump relative on non zero and try it again. So last character, B will be decremented to zero, B is zero and zero flag is one, so we won't jump again and halting the program. You can do this also in the reverse order, which is called out on decrement, and here We'll specify the text and minus one. And he's doing it in the reverse order. There's even an easier way to do this. Removing the loop and here adding R for repeat and we have to remove the U here so this means out decrement repeat. So the command Outputting it, we will decrement, decrement HL, and repeating until P is zero. Of course, uh, this also works for the increment. Change the beginning of the label here. And and as you can see, it works fine. I almost forgot to show you the special in instructions. Here we go. Loading HL with memory address fifty. Loading VC, I want uh, three bytes, and the input was address 25. So that's the same as uh, load B with three and load C with 25. You can also write it in two commands, but to optimize it, it's better to use this command. Our loop in increment and jump on non zero. So we have here the memory address and the peripheral. So we have fifty. Let's put the value here in the memory address, increment it HL and decrement it B. Next value 41, last one. And the program is halted 49. You can also do it in decrement. Input decrement so forty nine twenty one and 
around 28. There's also the repeat version. You don't need the jump here. Forty, forty-eight, and the last one, increment repeat, forty-eight. and EE. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next part. Bye bye.